right where we're at right now is one of the deepest spots and we're about 25 feet deep. Nearly two million people live in the five counties that surround the Great Salt Lake, but near its center... Don't really even see any signs of civilization out here. It's just, it can be very peaceful. The lake is 70 miles long. Widest, it's 40 miles wide. What can't be put into exact numbers? Shipwrecks waiting to be found. Last year, a combination of wind and receding water exposed what's left of a 118-year-old ship near the lake's south shore. With the lake as low as it is now, we're finding a lot of things we didn't know were out there. Dave Shearer, harbor master of the Great Salt Lake Marina, is our guide. You can see it really well over there. As we cross the lake, a freshwater current from one of the lake's tributaries, likely the Jordan River, has frozen. We pass through it and in time come to the railroad causeway. It almost makes Great Salt Lake two separate lakes. Fifteen miles of tracks atop a trestle with water flowing underneath is how it functioned starting in 1902. But in the 1950s, it was solidified with soil and stone. And ships which aided in that work... You can come out here by boat and certainly see them, but to come out on the railroad causeway, it, it, it is trespassing. There are three boats in this location. All of them were part of the railroad fleet, which helped build the causeway. And back in the 1980s, they purposely sunk them to keep them from floating up on top of the railroad track. Rising water threatened the rails then, but the lake is 13 feet lower today. This drastic drop also helped expose another, much older boat. It would be the timely goal, Brigham Young's boat, and it's on the south tip of Antelope Island. Part of it is visible, we just can't care and confirm that that is the wreck. It is in the right area to be the wreck, though. The timely goal broke free from a dock closer to Salt Lake City in the 1850s. The story is it just kind of floated over here and took on water and sank. Carl Aldrich manages the historic Fieldingar Ranch on Antelope Island, where weather and mud keeps the wreckage at bay. Unfortunately, there are no photos of the timely goal in its prime, only written descriptions which Fox 13 graphic artist Russ Slade has brought to life. There was a paddle wheel on the front and it was going to be powered by a horse on a treadmill. <laughs> so it'd be you know, rolling the belt and that would power the thing that moved the boat. Then they decided to do a steam engine, but uh, it was too expensive to ship it over here. Uh, so then they just uh, settled with the sailboat. There's something else a little easier to spot from shore. That is a, an old crane that we believe was left over when I-80 was being built. They actually got a lot of the road base from here on Antelope Island. Shearer says the crane isn't the only wreck that's not a ship. We've had quite a few planes crash in the Great Salt Lake. From my knowledge, there's still two F-16s in here. There's part of an A-4, there's parts of a couple helicopters. Back in 1936, there was a DC-3 that crashed in the lake and uh, Sinclair owned the plane. They wanted it back, so they used the W.E. Marsh and another boat to try to scour the lake for it. They finally found it, and it made a lot of press until about the 1950s when it disappeared. And we finally found it, oh, about eight years ago. This is what the W.E. Marsh looks like today. It doesn't look like much, but what you're looking at is just the side of the boat. A shape on an instrument panel. It's still underwater. Its location is known, but dozens of others probably 50, 60 at least. Remain mysteries. Promontory is uh, probably the, that would be the granddaddy of all the boats out here. It was a very large uh, paddle wheel boat back uh, in 1902. The king of the railroad fleet was over 125 feet long. We know that it should be over in Ogden Bay up behind Fremont Island. We just have not been able to find it. Todd Tanner, Fox 13 News, Utah.